Hello everyone, Nazanogami here. Welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium. Where you last left off. Evar pretty much told us that yeah, the Hardy Boys killed this guy and they were totally justified in doing it. And heck, you're not going to be able to arrest him. Good luck trying to arrest him. But he did give us permission to, to talk to them and we finally won them over. And they told us, uh, told us about the girl who was raped, uh, Clausia, I think it was. The girl we met at the very start of the game. We talked with her, but she confesses that no, she was not raped by the, the murder victim. I mean, they partied hard, but no, he didn't rape her. And she was also the one who called the RCM. Now, now I gotta talk for the Hardy Boys. It's you again. What is it? C calling him out on this whole. Clausia says she wasn't raped. Fuck. I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. For the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down, and she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. This is a diversion. Stay on track. Hmm. I don't see her as crazy. But cut the bullshit, she told me the truth. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. And you went and pushed her. I am gonna fucking hit you. Done. Titus Hardy. Success. Titus backs off. Fist down, everybody. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. Everett personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? When she's angry, she emphasizes the S. It gives her voice a strangely hypnotic quality. Her lips barely move as she speaks. Frankly, it's a bit terrifying. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper. We know that that fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Oh! Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Here, jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. This is their last play, this tape. Their story is in tatters. A mess. It might be nice to listen to, but at this point, you don't need to. Where'd you get this tape? You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. You bug them how? We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Understood. You've listened in on their communications. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Then which one of you is doing this advanced radio work then? It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop all day, writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Oh. Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. Yeah, man. You're like a radio genius or something. Those notes are some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. So what's on this tape? What's on it? We call it the door gun a mega mix. You'll know why. Won't you listen to it? That's enough for now. But really, why should I care? You lied to me. You don't care about evidence. 
the fuck are you a cop for then? Pigs, T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They are fucking keeping a score on their bulletin boards. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to talk about. There's a lot of questions. If you ask them now, they'll just keep bringing up the tape. Listen to it, and they'll have nothing to hide behind. That's enough for now. I'll get back to your investigation. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments of Titus Hardy. You do that. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. Why? Well, why knows why they didn't bring it up earlier? Requires a boombox. We're gonna have to go purchase a boombox. If we can even afford it. I think I saw the one lorry driver selling a boombox, along with all those clothes. Uh, yeah, right here, the boombox. The speakers below are banged up and worthless. The sneakers triumph over them. They're the star of the show here. Ugh, broken speakers. Pawn shop then? Yeah, up there. The boomboxes wait on the shelves. And your boombox, that gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. Dang it, we don't have enough money. Hello again. How can I help you? Sure, let me have a look. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. And especially that tire. It swallows photons around it. I have no need for necrotic objects. Oof. Your mother is a necrotic object! I'm fun! Look at me sparkling in the light of the projector! Anything else you're thinking of selling? Might as well sell this. And postcards too. Another time, perhaps. Now let's buy the it. Box is weight on the ship. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. 
All right. Let's go outside for this. And we're just carrying it around like that. The porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. You push, come on, set, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Revishan. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. The harbor. That's the son of a Gvalsun crane. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens too. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco con on the counter. You know, the dance of whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. Oh, is that the very end? Silence. End of recording. What do you think? It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. Uh, agree. Also sounded inebriated. Still. Oh. There's more going on here than we know. Cordy? One of the other mercenaries, I think. The one he was talking to. A Cohoi? Friend of his. A village on the Samaran Isola, in South Safri. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. You think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. A symbol of Soldier of the Apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. Okay, then what now? I think we've got a few more questions for class here. Don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's a Friday night. The contrast feels chilly, inappropriate even. All right then. Kingdom of Confidence. The Kingdom of Conscience will be exactly as it is now. Moralists don't really have beliefs. Sometimes they stumble on one, like on a child's toy left on the carpet. The toy must be put away immediately, and the child reprimanded. Centrism isn't change, not even incremental change. It is control over yourself and the world. Exercise it. Look up at the sky, at the dark shapes of the coalition airships hanging there. Ask yourself, is there something sinister in moralism? And then answer, no. God is in his heaven. Everything is normal on earth. God is heaven. All is right with the world. Moralist dialogue options heal morale. Increase learning caps. Hmm. I'm gonna hold off on these.
Alright, 7 o'clock. Enough time to go have another conversation with her. Yeah, it looks like we got the night lights going on. Um We're back. I was just thinking, what a nice evening it is for taking part in a murder investigation. Uh, uh Tyus Hardy gave us a recording where the disease states his intention to commit rape. She put her coffee cup down with a soft ring as the porcelain meets the metal table. Did he? I never said he was a good man or that he had good intentions. Only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. The same, he specifically identifies you as the target. Mm, where did they get this recording, exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased. Recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's gonna do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Exact words. Yeah. That was practically his pickup line. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it co holly style? Yeah. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little co -hoy. It wasn't his... everything. Think he was trying to scare people? No. I'm pretty sure he did all those things. And then had to internalize them to keep on living. Until they just sort of turn into his, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Go be megacism. Running joke. I was going to say running joke. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. He was like the Semenese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezud all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani ceramic armor which he wore in bed and in the shower. Weren't you afraid? Afraid of what? That tape the Hardy Boys recorded? Your mother probably never told you this, but girls are evil. Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Kohoi. I would be tearing it up soldier of the apocalypse style. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. She looks nope. back. Time moves slowly. The triangles of her face rearranging into a weary smile. Don't worry. 
We will protect you from her beauty. We will consult you through the reefs and sounds of her persona. We will see through deceits. You are shielded. You are wise. You are advised. There are muscles on long white bones that line her limbs, just below the silver jumpsuit. The strange moment ends. It was brief, no longer than 2.2 seconds. Yeah, I'm not gonna ask about it once uh, electrochemistry came and jumped into the conversation. Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lely. Lelystad. That's a good start. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink, the last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. Hmm. It's, he had a tattoo. Oh, that. What did it represent, do you know? It was a map of his life and the places he visited as a soldier. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. How so? How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this Oranis lit? He's smoking and drinking, of course. And his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them. Maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, What was this, baby? And he says, That was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, Okay. What's this, baby? And he's like, Saw some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. You were the woman in this? Oh, yeah. You would tell us precisely what, what these mean? No, thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms, from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Aranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer. For money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands. And on other islands, too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Ravishol and got killed himself. Thank you for clearing that up. Change of topic, perhaps? His eyes were blue? Yes. Light blue. They were like... Like little blue galaxies. It was strange, seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth? Yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. Oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made oily, not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. How old was he? He was 42. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older. But no, we even celebrated his birthday like some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Looks like you were right, officer. 
Points are good. Have one, you old dog, before we all die. The young woman looks at you, then the lieutenant, then you. She's clearly sensing something. A spike in testosterone levels, perhaps. Um... Where is Lelestad? The place, I mean. In Oranje, officer. It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. The Lelestad municipality has few boroughs and even fewer cities. It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gottwald. Executive summary. Cows, silos, and wheat. Yeah, that's nowhere town, all right. You were almost right, officer. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. I'll update the form. You're both from Ferrania? Yes. We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No. He was too old for that. And from another part of Oranian Rek. I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranje. It was bad habits. No love for Mother Aranye. But wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. Military man, but not a patriot. No. He left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did on Seminine. He wasn't the flag-waving kind. He was the making money, killing people kind. He was by no means a stupid man. A people person. A small platoon leader. Certainly not a patriot. You don't seem much like a patriot yourself. Mm-hmm. There is nothing on Moindi. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Maybe Oranya did bring us together. In loathing. I love Ravishal, though. I hope she loves me, too. As it was communism that killed him, um... I uh, think we're finished with this line of questioning. All right. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. You may mention the window to her? Yeah. That window is new. It is. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. He finds the answer unsatisfying. It would be hypocritical for me to say this. Quite the collection of prescription drugs. Thank you. I've put a lot of time and effort into it. Technically, possession of narcotics is legal in Revachon, but you should still reprimand her. I jam that. Hmm. How'd you manage to amass such a horde? With money, sir. It's not exactly the anti-star size caboodle I intend for it to be one day, but it's getting there. The anti-star is, or was, a Vespertine rock and roll star who liked to do drugs. He did so many drugs, he eventually mutated into a corpse. Oof. Collection includes Nakra, opioid antagonist. Comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. Is that something that happens to you often, miss? Better safe than sorry. And uh, preptide? Oh, yes. One of my favorites. It cures many ailments. Like what? Like not being able to stay up for 36 hours. Not being happy. It cures those ailments. It's just a merit speed molecule, basically. Yes, that's Very it. funky. All right. Why not? I'll be here until 11 p.m. drinking coffee, most likely. Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? Yes. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old. Where is this going? How old are you? That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. 
What lies beneath, you wonder? You could ask either one of them. Uh, Kim, how old do you think I am? Huh? How old do I look? How old? Hmm. 58? Oh my god, that's really old, really. You asked. Uh, 58. Oh my god. I don't think I'm that old. Uh, you, maybe you're wrong. You're wrong about the deceased too. He was way younger. He was deceased. He had been decomposing for a week. I uh, just I'll go on nearly extreme as that death itself, Lieutenant. This silence. Then a little more. Here it comes. Mercy. Sure, you're forty-two. Let's go. Wait. This requires scientific measurements. Yeah, I'm not afraid of the truth. To the laboratorium. <laughs> How old am I? Uh, I gotta wait to uh, unlock something else. How much experience do I have? Eh, earring there. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. Where does this lead to? I don't know. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. Think it's important? I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. Below, the hostile cafeteria creaks and groans under your added weight. A skeleton of composite support beams and cantilevers. A dull thump. Somewhere inside, a wind brace rattles from the imperceptible motion of the building. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and a number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. See? Main investigation and the door below are merging to a stereo investigation. I hate it when that happens. Ah. It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy, too. Very sturdy. Also mysterious. How old is my main character? Oh, that's a good question. Thinking early 50s? It's nearing 8 o'clock. The boys are still here. It's you again. What is it? I'm starting to feel like a middleman between uh, these two people. So I talk to her about the tape. Man. And nothing. She stands by what she said. That fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishaw. I gave you gold on that tape. That fucker wasn't aimed at you. It was at her. Dark stuff didn't prove anything, didn't change her mind. Dark. Dark is when you start a goddamn death rock band. He said he'd rape her. 
It's horrible. And then there are people who say that they're gonna kill their fucking boss. But that doesn't mean they would actually do it. What did she have to say then? Fine by her? This is what people are supposed to be like? Fucking whoop de doo Oh, <laughs> uh, let's try throwing him off. Tia, she says she'd like to be a little gore gunner herself if she could. Yes. In fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? No good goddamn psycho whore. All right. I'll fucking write it then. I guess it's good then. That fucking... Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawman? You don't have to say everything out loud. Just mix and match. Maybe she isn't who you thought she, uh, she was. Nah. I know her. She's just a girl. In over her head. Mix and match, huh? Not some helpless girl, she handled the mercenary well enough. Handled him? She got into some stupid shit with that guy. Shit we had to take care of. Yes, yes, we heard all about it, and the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. Be straight with me, what really happened? I already told you. We fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men too are growing increasingly silent. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her. Titus said. Fuck off! That lying scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over! Yeah. On the floor, Bear drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. I feel like he's gonna kill us next. What is this quiet funeral shit? What we need is some beers in us. Bartender! 20 beers for the Dock Workers Union! Why do we make it 40, huh? Why don't we make it a hundred beers? You're not loud enough. A hundred beers? Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. Roll it! The class oh. is playing them like a fiddle. Tell them how bad they got played, and they'll tell you the truth. There are many ways to go about it. All of them really good. That was one short. <laughs> guys are always telling me they're good, and they aren't. Those are the other guys. My shit is solid gold. You can trust me. Can I? All those ideas looked really bad. Oh, you don't like these arguments. Let's see you come up with your own, then. Come on. Everyone's waiting. Where are they? Why is Goldmouth mean to him? Something is wrong. It doesn't look like he's succeeding. Whatever. Just do the fiddle thing, sire. It'll be artistic. And if you've already done it, do it again. Uh. I'm not gonna make him angrier. I don't- I know what's going on here. I've been wrong too. I got this fucking dark shadow in my heart. What the hell are you talking about? As I awakened into this world coming, something came with me. An ancient sadness. Oh, that shadow. A man your age. The hangover must be lethal. I never thought I'd say this. But maybe you should cut back on the drain. How old do you think I am? That's enough for the shadow now, officer. Let's do procedural questions, or even, why not take a little breather? 
These working class oafs don't know how to talk about feelings. You shouldn't have opened up to them or anyone. As for a point rhetoric, just a try again. It's you again. One more time. Convince yes! her because he's being manipulated. Bad idea. Bringing her up will do no good. You should know by now. Titus will never falter. But you know someone who might. One of his boys will. Fat Angus. The powerful guy. Mr. All Muscle. The time has come. Put him in the pressure cooker. Just remember it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. Outside in the evening light, ruined and old, shadows lengthen on the pavement. A distant gunshot. Had to do this carefully now. That's it then, case closed. We're going home, Kim. Huh? He'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. And Martinez, they just kill you because they don't like you. Got it. Kill you. Because they don't like you. All because... Hmm... Because they don't like you, kill you. As you work for the wrong people? God damn right! This is Union Town! You work for the company, we will kill you! Fuck, Dennis! We don't kill you if you work for the company. Half the harbor works for the company. Work for the wrong company, and they execute you. Thank you, like in the Dark Ages, make a display of your corpse. It wasn't that. It wasn't... We just couldn't get him down, okay? That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer. You will be next if you don't shut up. Firearm. A Glass 08 or a 38 caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. Hmm. Or what? You're gonna kill me like you killed him? FOR NO FUCKING REASON! We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when... <laughs> gotcha! Gotcha! Shut up, Angus! Gotcha! He was dead before you hanged him! Fatty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis! Stand down, or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. <sighs> Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless. Because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you, just give her up. Her? Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Evrard. Fine, I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast. You're in. He's all yours. Questions. You did kill him, he was already dead. He nods. You hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Another nod. Why? Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Girls, plural? Girls, plural? <laughs> There's another girl. Two of them. Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. I think one of them might be uh, the eighth party. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. 
He doesn't think she did. Or at least he hopes she didn't. What happened Sunday night? Class J came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up, even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. How'd you know? I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> you don't get to talk yet, Chinky. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. What happened then? We went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. That fucking dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. Bullet hole through the window. He means they've been fucking. Tibbs patched the window and the corpse. We hang. So why the cover-up? You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. Didn't notice anything. What kind of shit are we talking about? They can't show up on police radar kind. There are people after her. From the old, old world. Where she came from. Who are they? They're powerful. Connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. So who's Tibbs, the 8th Hardy? Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. So who killed the Merc, the Nay leads? Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. What are you thinking? I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hers, you mean? I mean the people after Klausia. Maybe the shot missed. Maybe it was meant for her. I like that. Been thinking the same thing myself. Yeah, ideas about his past too. My dude. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns. Training. Years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Cronell. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. So whose idea was it to hang him anyway, hers? In a manner of speaking. Remember the two girls? He may be talking about the other one. Earlier you said the girls asked for your help. Was this the other girl? That's right. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it for political reasons. It sent a good message. It's her, isn't it? The drug trafficker? The missing eighth hardy? Fella, you think too much. He's off all right. You're gonna hurt your head. That woman is just affiliated with the hardy boys. You don't know her anyway. Uh, you tell me anything about her name, current location? Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. Can't we did it. The lieutenant gives a smile. Only you can see. Thank you for this. Go talk to her for the last time. You do that. Hey, cop. Before you go. Suddenly, the wind picks up outside. You hear it rattling the large windows in their frames. It carries newspapers, circles the whirling in rags in a warm column. She, Klausia, came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there is nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection, but... You still prefer if we didn't take her away. That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. Woo! Uh, 
Okay, let's have one last conversation with if before we uh, end the video. Uh, the guy was yeah he was shot Hardys did not kill him they just hung him just for sending a message except that message is gonna uh, it's gonna cause a kerfuffle between the union and the other mercenaries It's always good to see you. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. Hardy boys told us what really happened. I understand. Just like that, no resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. You sent us all run around. I know. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. For all of this, for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. Is it? Something is off here. Shush, I can't hear what she's saying. Why did you waste our time then? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. I don't know what to say here. I mean, I would have liked to hear more before saying anything. You're right. There's more. You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay and to the horizon, wine dark in the evening light. Lies beyond it. The Pearl, the Buindi Isola, the Occident, and then Aranye, the old, old world. That why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the more lintern? You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. What'd you do? Just business. But bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill, well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. But you have these people after you. It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol. Or even in Orania. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. I need the names of the companies involved. And who hired you? The job was Lou's doing County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Lou Scop conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too. Along with Lou Scop and their friends in the MI. <sighs> Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Lowe's cap. These people engineer financial disasters in second world countries. The conglomerate also includes the Bank of Consecration, Airbird, and the popular Papalolo line of dairy products. 
A lot of shit you've gotten yourself into. It is. Many people lost their jobs. Not just C-suite. Ordinary people. What I did to get to accounting, a lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. What happened here the night he died? We were there. Together. In bed, I mean. Tell me exactly what happened. Okay. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open. Dumb. I could see. I could... Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead. Before he fell down on top of me. Then? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream. Then ran downstairs. I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Your cigarette, miss. Oh. Sorry this happened to you. So am I. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. It's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. So you looked pretty high. Oh, uh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Um. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. What did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot, just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore. So I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. What happened after you ran downstairs? Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby. Ruby? Who's Ruby? Ruby. You know. The leader. The eighth Hardy boy. The leader? Of what? The Hardy boys. Thought Hardy was the leader of the Hardy boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen. Like, things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. This Ruby, in her phrasing, is entrusted with great power. She trusts her. So do the others. Would you say she is the eighth Hardy boy? Why not? All right, let's go on. Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation, that I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. That's what she does, you know, take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower, to keep him upright. To mislead you, they were tampering with the body. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood... You know what he does. Then? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just... looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on. His armor, too. It was tough but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. 
I'd gotten him ready by then. They carried him out. I knew what they were going to do, to make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. What did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while. That we should lay low or something. So I did. It's Ruby. Where is this Ruby now? I don't know. I haven't seen her since. We will need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. Interesting. Why did this Ruby go through so much trouble to hide something someone else did? Look into this later. What happened? Did you hear a gunshot? When he was shot? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud. This is something to keep in mind when assessing the distance of the shot. Could the people after you have killed him? That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. And? I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone so they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. Hmm. With her. I mean, given, like, the position he was in... Uh... I think they were deliberately trying to kill him. Something to consider? We can't go after Loose Cap. Not yet. There are other saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. But there's one thing I know, is that you'll get nothing from there. Why'd you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. Which is an indicator of truth. Idiot. She's nothing of the sort. I don't think so. Why did you do it? You have to understand. The people around here. No one was making the call, and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off, and that little fucker threw stones at him. Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob. Once. Just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud. Thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. I think we're done here for now. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um... He's thinking, are we done here? Hmm. God's name, wake up. Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She's smoke and mirrors and willow wisps. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. Mm. Kim, why have we not arrested her yet? There may be grounds here, at least for an extended detention. A little whimper. The young woman hears you. She's looking around. Yeah, if she was really, if she was after, yeah, thinking about it, drama's gonna have a point here, because if there are people who are after her, she wouldn't give us her real name, if, I mean, like, if the RCM is connected with the other guys, like, they get, she gets into our records, they hear back, she wouldn't give her real name. I agree. You wouldn't give us your real name. Not when people are after you. HA! Kim and I are on the same page! Okay. 
Okay, what? Okay, it's not. But you can tell me the truth. I log your work every week. It's all transmitted to Common, sir. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name. So I lied. Like I lied before. Like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time. I'm so tired of it. It's Katarzyna Lazie. It's a grad name. Jim's or Yuga grad in origin. Not occidental at all. Smells of motor oil, tiger, economic desolation, and rock music infused alcoholism. Uh, it's not Orane's name, not Bundy, it's Grad. My parents were Zemsk immigrants, but I'm nationalized Oranese. All I remember is Oranie. Alasie is my father's name. I haven't said it aloud in such a long time. That name. She's filling dead air. Can't stand the silence. She nods, her back straight, ready for whatever is next. Didn't th think you didn't make the call to the station. I did. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call 8102 for emergencies. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint. She coughed. That is the emergencies desk number. Anyone could know that, sire. By looking around and calling the desk, I don't believe a single word she says. What time did you make the call? Thursday night. It was late. Sometime after 12. It checks out. She stands before you, holding her back very straight. What if I told you you're under arrest? But I haven't done anything. Anything legal. Failure to aid a police investigation. Tampering with the body. She purposefully misrepresented information crucial to the case. Fucking mind games. Enough. That's right, gang. Stern and merciless now. Stern and merciless as we reel her in. Oh, damn drama. You're on a roll. Uh, you mess represent information about the case. Now the Hari's confession, we know nothing. The lieutenant produces a pair of handcuffs. Woof! Please, no. I think I know who did it. Who shot Lely. I can tell you. I can help you. Well, you know who shot him. She's silent for a second, as if looking into herself for certainty. Then, in a hushed voice, she says... Gearing up for this betrayal is hard for her. Ruby. Why'd you think it was her? Well, how could she have killed him? She could have had access to the roof. You've noticed that door there, right? Maybe it leads downstairs. She could have come to the roof through that, then taken the shot right here, where I stand. It was dark outside. I wouldn't have seen her. From right here? So did you lie about the gunshot too? Cause you would, I mean, unless that gun had a silencer and it coming from a, a rifle, I don't think it did. Do rifles have silencers? I don't think so, but from right here, you would have heard the gunshot. Then slipped back downstairs without anyone noticing. That is possible. Interesting theory. Did she know that door exists? Had you been out there with her? Yes, of course. She's been up here many times, jacking private stations off the ring antenna. She used to come here to drink on the roof with me, before it got weird. Why do you think it was her? She has this thing for me, ever since I met her and the boys downstairs. She's been pretty frank about what she wants. And that is? Sex. And more. I made the mistake of confiding in her. I told her I was on the run. She started protecting me. It became an unhealthy relationship. When I started spending time with Lely, she told me to end it. Said there would be shit if I didn't. It was not a good meeting. We stopped talking after that, but... I don't understand. What exactly in your relationship made you think she is romantically interested in you? 
She said she's in love with me. She even asked me to run away with her when I told her I'm a fugitive. She started developing notions about our relationship. Oof. And you led her on? A little. I was flattered, you know? But then I had to let her off, and it was not easy. I came to regret being friendly with her. We may be kissed, nothing more. Sounds like she was fixated on you. This is just an assumption. I know what it sounds like. That's why I didn't want to tell you before. But she knew what had happened when I came downstairs. Somehow, she knew Lely was dead. She wasn't surprised at all. When we came up here, she was calm as a stone, too. She cleaned it all up like she had a plan. This is a familiar theory. You had it too, remember? Could it be that Ruby was covering up after herself? The lynching? Ruby said there wouldn't be shit happening if you didn't in your relationship with the deceased. Was she threatening you? She came over one night, drunk. Said she'd turn my life into a living hell. I've been threatened before. As I can tell when someone knows how to do it. And she's a pro. She must be. To keep the hardies in line. I tried severing ties with her after that. I thought it had worked, but... Some of that fear is still with her. She exhales sharply. What are you talking about? She's afraid you'll arrest her. That's it for Ruby. Okay. And what? Arrest the liar now. Don't arrest her. Push her a bit more, but then let her off. That Ruby theory was solid. And she's beautiful. Ha. Huh. Oh. Her. Stop letting her distract you. Ah. Another dilemma. I mean, yeah, technically she did commit a crime. But she's also being hunted down by these people. For shit that she did. But I can't help but feel sorry for her at the same time. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything. Thank you. Thank you. Y you won't regret it. Something tells you, you will. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath. As if in the presence of some tiger. You are. This is not the end of this. Probably a bad idea, but... Uh, it's like one of those... logical thinking versus... empathy things, like... You gotta pick one. And it is nine o'clock. Are the Hardy Boys still there? They might be gone for the day. But then again, drinking beer, you, they'd probably be up later than that. But then again, let's just take a quick peek. Yeah, they're still here. And we are gonna talk with them next time. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, until then, this is Nazo, signing off.